Welcome back guys, you wanted the best early game build possible for Assassin's Creed Odyssey, now here it is, you can totally throw away your Blade of Yumminess, this build will be way way better than anything you have ever seen at level 20. Yes guys, this is no joke, everything you see here, all the damage numbers, all the hundred thousands of damage, all the crit numbers, this is all done on level 22 and of course on Nightmare difficulty. You have 113,000 hunter damage, unleashing the full force of the power of Artemis to all those poor Spartans. We will have all our tools, we will have fire damage, fire arrows, overpower attacks, they don't even stand a chance. 258,000 warrior damage here on the polo mark. Our fire sword will melt through those rows of enemies and they won't even notice where it's coming from. You will become the true mercenary hunter here as early as level 22. You will also deal 105,000 assassin damage, rush assassinating mercenaries, normal assassinating mercenaries, critical assassinating mercenaries, using furious the bloodline to kill mercenaries, using overpower to kill mercenaries or even using your devastating shot to kill mercenaries just with a single shot every time they crit. This build is so insanely powerful, if you compare it to a level 99 build, it would be similar to dealing millions and millions of damage to those enemies. Of course it comes to a price, we are using the Fox of Olympus, that's not for everybody, so I will make two build variants here for you, one full health variant and a Fox of Olympus variant. Both of these builds will have over 50% crit chance as early as level 22 and over 300% critical damage as early as level 22. And don't worry when you make non-critical hits because those will be 100% deadly to any normal enemy anyway. And if you need sometimes two hits for a mercenary that totally doesn't matter at all. But now let's check out the damage values for this build. When you make a critical hit with the light attack you should get around 19,000 damage when you attack from behind, with the heavy attack you will be at 26,000 damage and with the charged heavy attack 3 times that amount 77,000 damage. The fury of the bloodline in an animation cancel will be around 87,000 and overpower attacks will be around 186,000 in an animation cancel. But the highest damage is achieved when you attack polar marks from behind here dealing up to 258,000 damage. Damage. Our devastating shots will deal up to 113,000 damage when they crit and rush assassination will also be over 100,000 easily killing every mercenary as well. You can kill them with fury, with overpower attacks or with devastating shots or simply use your critical or rush assassinations. You will be a total mercenary killer as early as level 22. Before I show you the inventory, special thanks to my super fans Bruce and Grateful Golem. If you also want build advice, wallpapers, private chat rooms and more, check out the discord server and hit the join button to become a premium or supporter of this channel. That is greatly appreciated if you want more of this insane content. Here in the inventory we have 5000 warrior damage, 23000 assassin damage and also 5000 hunter damage because the big horn bow uses our warrior damage when we shoot our arrows. You can actually use the big horn bow as early as level 15 because at level 15 you unlock your left melee weapon. And the big horn bow simply adds its own DPS to your left melee weapon amplifying your warrior damage by a factor of 1.6. That's a big difference here between your left and right melee weapon, 5000 instead of 3000 warrior damage and the big combo will also use these 5000 warrior damage when you shoot your arrows. Everything you have to do is get the big combo, unlock your left melee weapon slot and just equip the right melee weapon while you are running around and even while you shoot your arrows. 5000 warrior damage may actually seem a little low, but since the game increases damage and health and everything exponentially, 5000 is very very much. It is around equal to 200,000 warrior damage at level 99, you will be able to one shot everything here at level 22 with your 5000 warrior damage. And in order to get hundred thousands of damage when you make your hits, we will have to abuse any multiplayer we have in the game. We will abuse damage swords, elemental damage, we will abuse the big combo, the crit chance, the crit damage and all our abilities to do so. 
there is one effect that happens at lower levels because at lower levels your engravings on your items here for example on the haters harper are relatively low compared to what you get from your abilities. In your ability sections you get 40% additional assassin damage, 50% crit damage, 40% warrior damage easily by just using 3 of your ability points. So I just briefly want to show you the abilities you have to get and highlight the ones which are really important for that build because otherwise you might skip that part of the video. No matter which playstyle you actually play it is very important to get 6 cents to slow down time not even as a hunter but also as a warrior, use archery master to get your first adrenaline refilled for free, get more crit chance here with weapons master that is very very important to get even to 50%, use the fire ability 40% damage from fire mastery and also don't forget the assassin ability that gives you 40% assassin damage and 50% crit damage for any playstyle. All these are mandatory, they give you very huge bonuses especially during early game. And additionally to that, also the legendary engravings are much much stronger. Almost all the legendary engravings will be more powerful than your standard engravings. So at below level 50, your standard engravings are weaker than the legendary engravings. Above level 50, most of your standard engravings will be better than all the legendary engravings. You can easily see that the standard engravings on the haters harper have only reached tier 3. That is indicated by the dots left and right to your engravings. So we only have 15% critical damage and 9% damage swords. The maximum would normally be 50% crit damage and 30% damage swords. These tiers increase every 10 levels. That is the reason why I collected the Haters Harper at level 21 and you should definitely not make this build earlier than level 21. Because exactly at level 21 you will get the tier 3 engraving upgrade for all your weapons you collect. So when you collect the Haters Harper at level 21 these engravings will have reached tier 3 already and you don't have to upgrade your item. The next upgrade for these engravings will be at level 31, 41, 51 and so on. But I definitely not recommend you to wait so long. You should upgrade your weapon at around level 26 then again at 31 to increase your DPS value because you need more DPS definitely when you upgrade a couple of levels. Hater's Harper can be collected when you do the A Friend in Need quest in Attica. Just go to Hator at level 21, lie to him to keep the sword and then you will get a perfect warrior sword from him. All the engravings on this sword will upgrade to maximum strength when you upgrade your item. So you don't have to worry that these engravings will stay at lower levels, they will definitely upgrade alongside when you upgrade your item. The legendary engraving with 100% damage but health cap to 25% can be unlocked and engraved when you collect the Falks of Olympus. That weapon can be collected very early in the game already. The only thing you have to do is travel to the location north of Terra and then dive to the chest and loot it. The other sword is the Sword of Axon, also a very easily collectible sword. It has warrior damage, damage swords and fire damage instead of the critical damage. Here we will engrave the 25% additional warrior damage from the Hades Bident. So in order to use that engraving you have to go to the Helix store and get the Hades Bident, then you unlock that engraving. The Sword of Axon can also be found in Attica, just go to the Acropolis in Athens, go to the Parthenon and there will be a legendary chest inside of the treasury chamber. Also do that on level 21 to have the full upgraded engravings at tier 3. For our bow we will use the Beacon bow, as already mentioned it will amplify our warrior damage by an additional 60% for our left melee weapon because it adds all its 478 DPS to our left melee weapon, to our haters harper. And here we will engrave the 10% crit chance but minus 50% crit damage. That engraving can be unlocked when you buy the Talon Dagger from the Helix store as well. I know that we use a lot of stuff here from the Helix store but that is actually the only and the best way to make a crazily overpowered build. There is simply no such stuff you can easily loot at the beginning of the game. So you have to rely on stuff from the Helix store and from the engravings on the Helix store most of the time. And we will use the most powerful stuff here we can get. Of course you could also engrave 2% crit chance normally on the bow but that would only be 2%. By using the legendary engraving you will get a full 10% crit chance. Even though you lose a lot of critical damage but that doesn't matter because we will get it back anyway. And the trick we use to get it back is using the Nemean Lion set. Because the Nemean Lion set has a set bonus of 10% crit chance and 50% crit damage at full health. So in fact when we combine the Talon Dagger engraving, the plus 10% crit chance but minus 50% crit damage with the Nemean Lion set set bonus, 
we get 20% crit chance but 0% crit damage because the crit damage will cancel out each other and we are left with only 20% critical chance. So by using the main lion set and the tail in the gang graphic we get additional 20% crit chance as early as level 22. So we basically have a set bonus here that gives us 20% crit chance instead of the usual 10% crit chance. And that's one of the great tricks here to get to over 50% crit chance by using that build. The next trick we use to get another 10% crit chance very early on is that we collect all the 5 Ostra cards for the crit chance at full health. That way we will get 10% crit chance at full health and we can engrave that here on the Nemean Lion headgear. So that's a tier 5 engraving that is only dependent on the amount of Ostra cards you collected. And you can really collect them very easily. It will take you no longer than 30 minutes to do so and you get another 10% crit chance for it. Please be aware that when you claim your items from the Helix store, for example the Nemean Lion set or the Bighorn Bow, you should also do that on level 21. Because when you claim your items from the Helix store, they will also match the level of your character. So when you do that at level 21, you will also have them at level 21 and you don't have to upgrade them. On the Nemean Lion Bracers we have Warrior damage, 20% crit damage while full health and here we can use another legendary engraving. For example the 50% crit damage with Hunter abilities, the 50% crit damage with Warrior or with Assassin abilities. Each of these engravings comes from a specific set. The 50% damage with Hunter abilities comes from the Sphinx set, the 50% damage with Warrior abilities comes from the Spartan Renegade set. So you have to buy either of these sets and decide if you want to buff your hunter abilities or your warrior abilities. Since the warrior abilities are way way stronger than your hunter abilities anyway in this build, there is no problem to one shot a mercenary with overpower or with fury of the bloodline, I recommend you to go with additional 50% crit for your hunter abilities. Because your devastating shot needs a little buff to one shot a mercenary on nightmare. So the hunter damage here with hunter abilities would be perfect in my opinion, that's unlocked when you get the Sphinx set as well. If you don't want to get another set just for the additional 50% crit damage with Hunter or Warrior abilities, then you can just engrave 2% crit chance on the Bracers or a bit of Assassin damage instead. The belt is pretty much the same, we have Warrior damage, 30% crit damage while full health and here there's actually no useful other legendary engraving. So on the belt I really recommend you stick with the 2% crit chance or use Assassin damage instead. That is probably the best option. The crit chance will actually grow with your level so you will get 3%, 4%, 5% at level 50. That is still okay if you do that. On the torso we have warrior damage and health and here we will engrave 10% crit damage on it. Please be aware that once you upgrade your 10% crit damage to be 15% when you reach another level to do so, then you have to re-engrave it with the 15% crit damage. The engravings you place on your own need to be re-engraved, they don't upgrade automatically. Only the engravings that are fixed on the items upgrade automatically. Everything you place on your own needs to be re-engraved and overwritten with the higher level. And finally on the boots we have warrior damage, 6% crit chance at full health because that was already on it so we only have the tier 3 engraving for the crit chance at full health which is only 6% so we cannot engrave another 10% crit chance at full health. The game prevents you to use the same engraving again on an item. So instead we have to engrave the 50% crit damage while full health. We have actually tier 5 of that engraving because the 50% crit damage while full health depends also on Ostra cast. So there are 5 additional Ostra cards which you can solve to get the crit damage while full health to the maximum 50%. At least that's the maximum before you go to Hephaestus workshop but you don't have enough money to buy further upgrades for that. I will post you a link to solve all these 10 Ostra cards in the description of this video and I will also post a map for the ideal route to collect all the necessary Ostra cards, items and tombs. That will give us a total value of 240% warrior damage, 140 assassin damage and 149 hunter damage. But the hunter damage is not important because we will use our warrior damage when we shoot arrows anyway. We will also have 18% damage with swords. That value is now a little low but it will definitely increase very very much when you continue to upgrade this build. It will be an important factor because it is not an additive bonus. That 18% is a multiplicator and it really multiplicates our damage. It already gives us almost an additional 20% multiplier here. So it's really important to have swords with damage swords even on early levels. 
then we have 53% critical chance at full health and 250% critical damage at full health. And when we add the additional 50% with our hunter abilities or with our warrior abilities, we will in fact have 300% critical damage at full health. But of course that's only for our abilities when we use that specific playstyle. More important is the 52% additional fire damage, which is basically completely free. We get 40% from our abilities and another 12% from the Sword of Axon. So an additional 50% damage that is greatly helping and increasing our warrior damage and our hunter damage. When you use poison damage instead you will only get 25% from your abilities and I don't even know a good easily collectible weapon at early levels that has poison damage on it. So the sort of action with 12% fire and 40% fire damage from our abilities really work very very well together giving us a huge additional bonus. If you rather want to play at full health then I suggest you to use the following modifications. Instead of the 100% damage but health kept to 25% you should use the 30% all damage instead. That engraving can be unlocked from the Nemean Club from the Helix store so that engraving will cost you money while the 100% damage but health kept to 25 is a free engraving from a base game item. The only other change I would propose is when you want to engage more in melee fights with a warrior focus build is that you place the 50% crit damage with warrior abilities that can be unlocked from the renegade set, the spartan renegade set which is unfortunately also a helixtor set. In order to get all the abilities shown here on that page you need 30 ability points. So you only have level 22, that means you have to solve 9 additional tombs across the main game. And these are easily solvable because you don't need high level to get into the tombs. There are no enemies except for the snakes and they don't really hurt you. And since you also have to travel across the map to get all the ostracars, you can also collect all the 9 tombs when you do that. All these preparations with all the ostracars and all the tombs should take you no longer than 1 hour to complete. Here's a list of tombs I propose you to solve when you collect that ostracars. When you have enough ability points then you should put 2 points on 6 cents because that is not only doubling your hunter damage it also slows down time here for 6 seconds in total. So that also helps your warrior attacks and your assassinations when your target is stunned and cannot really react during that 6 seconds. That is really valuable to get an advantage over your enemies. Then you should put 2 points on arrow master to unlock your poison or fire arrows. Fire arrows are especially useful because we can get an additional fire damage boost here from our fire mastery ability. So that is really helpful when you have fire arrows, they cost a little more materials when you craft them but they also deal way more damage when you have them. The most important hunter ability to get early on is actually the devastating shot. You could theoretically also go for the multi shot but the devastating shot is the most powerful and easiest one to use. So definitely get 2 points on that and then also 3 points on archery master. Because archery master gives you more hunter damage, more headshot damage and most importantly it also refills your first adrenaline segment. So whenever you have a little rest of adrenaline in your adrenaline bar you will always get your first adrenaline segment back which you can use to heal up yourself or use fury to get even more adrenaline out of it. Then in the warrior tree you go for charged heavy attack that is kind of optional but it is really really strong. If you put only 2 points on charged heavy attack it already reached its maximum strength because there is kind of a bug here on that ability it already has 150% damage and the maximum also is only 150% and that 150% is actually a 300% because it is 3 times the amount of a normal heavy attack. So when you have 26,000 damage of a heavy attack you will get over 77,000 with a charged heavy attack which is crazily strong especially here on early levels. Definitely put 3 points here on weapons master you will get 10% crit chance and also 40% warrior damage when you do that. The armor is actually not really needed especially when you play with the reduced health with the Falks of Olympus then you should not put any points here. Instead put 1 point here on flaming attack to unlock the fire mastery. 3 points on fire mastery will give you 40% additional fire damage. That can be used for your sword when you enable fire on your sword and also when you have fire arrows. So it is helpful for both your arrow attacks and your melee attacks as well. 
and then definitely use the overpower attacks. They are already crazily strong in level 22, you can easily kill a mercenary with a single overpower attack. Even if you only crit 50% of the time, it will always be enough to kill them. If you have the legacy DLC, then you should also get Furious the Bloodline that will multiply your adrenaline segments. And of course, second wind, two points on second wind, mandatory to heal yourself. It is a little bit weak, only heals 35%, but that's still good enough. And then in the assassin tree definitely go for shadow assassin because that not only gives you 40% additional assassin damage but also 50% critical damage. You can go all in here with already putting 3 points on it and that will give you the additional crit damage for all your playstyles. Which means it is also beneficial for warrior and hunter abilities. When you put 2 points on rush assassination that will be enough to one shot a mercenary with rush assassination on level 22 and the same when you put 1 point on critical assassination that will also be enough to one shot a mercenary on level 22 on nightmare easily. But only of course if you make a critical hit which happens only 50% of the time due to your lower level. But once you reach higher levels you will easily close the gap to be at 100% crit chance and then this will be crazily overpowered anyway. If you have more points you could also go for stealth master that will give you an additional out of combat damage overnight. I don't really recommend hero strike because that seemed to be quite weak compared to the other warrior and hunter abilities here. Below level 50 you don't have mastery ability so there's nothing to show you there and we are also running out of points here. I hope you liked this video, please don't forget to subscribe, leave me a like and see you next time.